So like I said earlier, I'm going to break this down into three categories. So category number two is going to be cherish your employees. Everywhere I go now, I'm hearing of the struggle that we're having with labor. So cherish your employees. I want to talk about, first thing, the golden rule. Do unto others you want them to do unto you. I get it. It's very difficult dealing with help in our industry. You have to find these guys that really have a passion for the industry. I would start off first with those that are already working for you. Those are the ones you really want to hold on to and really nurture, train, teach. You want these guys to be happy working for you. If you're happy, you never work a day in your life. Now, of course, that's a little bit stretching it, but you want your staff happy. You want them to come to work happy. And I know there's some guys that you say are never going to show up and they're coming in late and they're dragging. I got to say, first of all, look at yourself because I do that for myself. You really need to look at yourself first. What kind of a leader are you that's drawing these guys into work and that they're excited to come there? And there may be different things you might have to change up in your company. One thing I know that, that makes our guys happy, you get them coffee in the morning. Simple little thing, a couple of coffee, guys can come in, they can have their coffee, give them a little bit of five, 10 minute chat time where they can talk about either day or just a little bit of social time. That can be important to guys. So you gotta find the hot button for your help and make sure that they're thrilled. And like I said, you really need to cherish those that work for you already because we're gonna go into a year that's gonna be, I think, myself, extremely hard to find help. So you're gonna to have to combat that a little bit different way. Reward those that are working for you already. Reward them richly. If you can, financially, great. And it may be other avenues. It may be a new vehicle or a new piece of equipment or something like that, which we'll talk about. So I'll talk a little bit about um, leadership. And again, I was told by a very wise businessman, he told me, Phil, you're never gonna be good at everything. And where you're lacking, that's where you need to hire your, hire your help. And I wanna encourage you as a business owner, and again, every time you're pointing a finger, there's three fingers pointing back here, right? So think about that concept. We have to examine ourselves first and really be honest with ourselves as where we struggle. And it may be in dealing with our help, and that's really where you might need the most help trying to propel your company forward. So first of all, myself, I'd look internally. Is there somebody from inside your company that you could put in that position and maybe dealing with the help if you're not the one? Obviously, ruling with an iron fist does not work these days. We need to be a little more diplomatic. We need to massage the situation and try to keep our help happy. So maybe from within, you're gonna have somebody that could help out with that. Another thing, just getting your employees to work, getting them to work efficiently. So what we've done at our Hardscape company, we've done a bonus program. I've talked about this a little bit before. So generally it's 10% it's of their pay. So at Christmas time, they're gonna get a 10% bonus. One of your employees making 40 grand, he's gonna get a $4,000 bonus. Now what we've done right off the bat, if somebody's gonna be late, so if they come in late, they walk in that door one minute late, automatically it's $50 off of that bonus. If they're, if they're absent, if they're not there, this doesn't include their vacation days, but if they're absent, even if it's for a good reason or a sick day, automatically off the bonus, we take money. So that's $100 off their, off their bonus. So every week as it goes down through, if they're missing a day, it shows up in their paycheck. They're gonna see that, or they might get a simple little note saying they're gonna be short this much on their, on their bonus. So come Christmas time, when you sit down with your employees and you hand them that Christmas bonus, you're able to look at them and they may have missed they may have given up $700 of their bonus just by missing X amount of days and being late this many times. And that's a great way to show them visually, say, this is what happened here. You missed out on $700, so instead of that $4,000 paycheck or bonus, you're now getting $3,300. So these are things that are a direct visual, and they can see they can see the consequence of their actions. Oh, I just don't feel like getting up, or oh, I'm not going to work today. So I think it's very wise to put some kind of program like this in place. It can help with getting your help, at least to the job site, getting them to work every day. And most of the time, it's just getting the guys to the job. They're most of the time very, very efficient once they're on the job. So lastly, I wanna talk a little bit in this category about hiring. Super difficult, I get it. Been there, done that. We've, been, we've hired hundreds of employees over the years. We've done head hunting, which again, racking my brain, my brother's racking everybody, trying to find somebody that we think could be a good fit for our company. And then obviously going to them, approaching them. You don't want to steal somebody from, from another company necessarily, but see if they're happy where they're at. If they're not happy, see what you can put together to offer them. It may be that they're not happy at all. You thought they were happy, maybe they're not. So headhunting, I think, is very important. 
because you can reach out to some people that could be a tremendous asset to your company. Another area you can look is high schools. Uh, I know when I growing up, we had a cooperative work experience. These are the kids that are graduating high school that they don't want, they don't care about going to college. They love the outdoors. They want to, they want to be out. They want to be building things. They want to make things with their hands. You find that kid coming out of high school that wants to work in this industry, you got yourself a gold mine. I mean, training a kid when he's younger uh, to the way you want him and molding him and shaping him is, is phenomenal. So those are great, great uh, employees to have. Obviously your colleges, colleges have a lot of programs now. There's some that have full hardscape programs that train and teach these young uh, adults on how to, how to hardscape. And I think that would be a great one, whether it be in the hardscape, the landscape, horticulture, even ag. Um, some of those areas are great areas to look into. And then lastly, I had a thought is search your other employees. Ask your employees, do you know of somebody? I know in our, in our hardscape business, we got a lot of relatives that work for our company that they reach out to family, friends or whatever, and they bring people in. And you may want to think outside the box. And I know uh, my daughter, she dealt with this in the insurance company. They would actually give their employees a thousand dollar bonus if they could bring an employee or staff to the company and they were employed for, a, I think it was a period of six months at least. And you look at the dollars and cents, to have a guy that you love working for your, you'd pay a thousand dollars all day long to have that, to fill that void. Cause it is, it's painful. When you got all this workload ahead of you and you got no way to get it done, we need the staff, we need the help, we need a team member. Stay tuned and watch for our last topic, tools and equipment.